Welcome to uh, Deep Dive with uh, Hamlet Paredes. Hammy, lovely to see you yet again, always. I'm going to ask you a question because the guys want to know. When you were uh, the master roller at, uh, say, Romeo and Juliet, and you were doing your Salamones, you were doing your fantastic cigars, what, what input did you have into the tobacco? How often did the tobacco arrive to the store? What input did you have in that tobacco? How did you, how did you maintain the blend, like day in and day out? with that tobacco to achieve your signature cigars? Okay, so um, first of all, good to see you again, you know, as always, and happy to see you. And whoever is gonna listen to this, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever the time is. Um, and yes, yes, I had a, I had a big influence in, in, the, in the tobacco that I was getting. Not at the beginning because I didn't, knew the the mechanism of where this tobacco came from but i always had the i mean i came from the factory so i had a lot of good relationship before i jumped to the retail store so i found sooner than later who was the the guy behind that so i went there because at the very very beginning when i was when i started in the in the tropicana little tiny cigar store, you know? Uh, I was served just with whatever was the left over of whatever they were given to the other rollers. So the question that you did was, what about in, in Rome, the store, which it was kind of like a bigger deal for that in that aspect. Uh, and yes, at that point, I already have all the, the route, you know, to, to go on the path. So what I did was before, we did that like as a company. Uh, we had a bunch of rollers that were in the cigar stores. And then it was one day a month that uh, we went to the, I mean, it was like maybe two of us that went to, I was pretty much all the time going if I was in queue. The only time I didn't went there to the warehouse was when I was flying out of queue. So, and then I, I, I did pick uh, for the company and for so, myself. So, so Tabacuba supplied the tobacco, yeah? The Tabacuba yes, supplied yes, the yes. tobacco, yeah. So you'd so go the, to their warehouse. Yes. So the, the cool thing was that, and I see it was the, the, the key. And as I always said, you know, we can be good or bad blenders and rollers, but the tobacco is the number one reason that we all doing this. So, and... Uh, the, I, I believe that the main, uh, the main uh, staff in the in the in the blend that all of us we did and we and they do still whoever is in the source now, is that we never had only one brand of tobacco, and that's it. We only have like a mixture of different main brands together and that just made that difference so we on the top of that each one of us we put our hand on, on our blends and make it more even more special so and uh and i think i mean how do you keep that blend after one day after another it was a pain because you know like most of the time you went there and uh, and that barrel were gone and then it was not any more of that ones, and there were different ones. And, but I mean, that's something that we're very familiar with as blenders. Uh, so you have to re-blend the cigars all the time, no matter what the tobacco came from. So it's all about your palate. So you just start from zero again and and do what you do. And until you don't so hit you, that point. When, when you when you so it must have been a nightmare when you were rolling on the road. So you were rolling in Hong Kong, Australia, Germany, France. You went all around the world with Havanos, yeah. And you were there, one of their signature rollers with Havanos. And every different distributor would provide you the tobacco to yes. to roll with. It's, it was different all the time. All the time, yeah. Totally different, man. And then you know it was even worse uh, working working out there. 
was freaking even worse for, for me to try to balance and and I mean to be honest there is so much you can do to adjust the tobacco that they give you to kind of like what you normally do in a day by day so I mean I, I what something that I can tell you is and I said this to a few people uh, the best tobacco that I ever touch ever traveling for Havanos out there was in uh, in my tour in in London in the UK really and it was by mistake but a beautiful mistake that a warehouse guy did so I, I arrived to the company to Hunters and Francos and I had a little chat with with Gemma and then she was like what if you want I was waiting for the guy that was in charge to move the rollers around but the guy wasn't there and then she was like what happened if you want you can go down to the where to the warehouse and ask the guys there just to show you the tobacco that you're going to be working with and I said yeah, yeah absolutely so I went down of course I didn't know anybody there so I saw this guy and the on the ladder, and I said, hey, I nice to meet you, I'm Hamlet, I'm the roller from Cuba, and you please just uh, show me where the, the tobacco that I have got to be used in is. And the guy was like, yeah, 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 don't worry. So he put down like four bolsters, like big massive cartons. And I remember, I, I, silver, even now, I'm never gonna forget that, that moment. I opened the first one, and it looked to me like that, I mean, I did that all the time. So normally they, they pack that in the brand new cardboard boxes, which, you know, with the date, which is the date, or maybe like a, a month or two before my arrive. So, and that was like very nasty, old, dusty, big, huge, uh, big cardboard box. And, and I'm like, eh, okay. So I remember I opened it up. The smell that came out of that box was so beautiful. And I said, ooh, the, the tobacco, I did, I, I touched it, it was like, like rocks. It was so like nasty and, and dry, but, but the smell was so good, bro. And, I, and then the guy just, is that one? I said, yeah, yeah, it's this one. So bring the other ones down. So when I put everything down, then this guy shows up. He said, no, 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 that's not the, the tobacco that you're going to use. It's this new one. And I said, well, you know what? Can I use this one? And he's like, well, I mean, you can use it. Nobody used it for like 15, 20 years. So if you want to use it, I'm like, yeah, uh, the, I want to use this. He said, okay, so use it. Because no, there's no one roller here that can't, that want to use that. They, they refuse to touch I'm like, oh, no, me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this one. So the best, you know what I did, man? First time in my life. I spent four months traveling around the UK. And for the first time in my life, I made 50 cigars out of my hand with that tobacco. And I brought them back to Cuba for me to smoke it in Cuba. Only me. I didn't share that tobacco with nobody. Imagine this, I'm coming back as a Cuban roller, touring around rolling cigars from the UK and I brought 50 cigars that I made for myself to put it in my humidity and enjoy them. That's how, how good did you is. treat How did you treat that tobacco? So it's dry, it, it hasn't been looked at. It no was, I mean, it in 20 years. the good thing was that the, only the top part of the, I mean, I, I, I almost kind of like regret myself five, minutes, five seconds later of what did I just say? You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to struggle here because remember, when we, as Cuban rollers, when we do tours, we ain't using molds or presents or nothing. It's just, it's a freehand. So I said, you know what? And the good thing was, it was only this mush on the top that it was really, really dry, but the rest was kind of good. I mean, it's very easy to bring that back to, to what normal is. And that was, man, like, I was for the first time in my life rolling, a 15, 16 year old cigar, that it was a fresh one. I mean, I mean, just put it in your head, like what? It doesn't I mean, happen. it doesn't happen. No, it no. doesn't happen. So I, I'm rolling something that I know for a fact that before I put it together, 
He's 16, 15, 16 years old. I mean, I didn't, when I was rolling that for four months, I didn't, so many times I really want to get a bite in the freaking tobacco. I didn't know I was hesitating to eat it or, or, or roll it, you know? It was really good. But it's an interesting segue here because you normally work with fresh tobacco. So now you're working with aged tobacco. Where do you see the difference between fresh and aged tobacco? Oh, it's a huge difference. You... Yeah. Huge difference. It's, it's a huge Just, I, I can get it like this right away. I, 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 you know also, you know, um, a lot of people know also, because imagine that you open a bag of tobacco leaves that smell like when you open a box that been aged for 15, 16 years but multiply that smell of the box by 10 times. That yes. lovely vintage aroma, but in 20, 30 pounds of tobacco together. You know what I mean? That's, that's, that's how beautiful that smell is. I wonder you're excited. It, it's indescribable. Man. I, you gotta leave it to, to feel it. I mean, and I have everything. The only thing that I really struggle that they have just a little bit and I have to use the, the ones that they sent was a wrapper. Because I mean, you can, it's very easy to bring back uh, fillers and binders, but the wrapper, you know, it is it's tough because, you know, it, it just lose the, the oil, you know, the elasticity. Even though like that, I, I did the ones that I brought to me, for me, I didn't care how they look like. I just care about how they taste like. So I use that, that very, not that good looking wrapper, but I didn't care. It was so tasty and so good that I, I didn't care. So my 50 cigars, I did actually 25 Salomons and 25 uh, flying pigs for myself. And I brought them and I smoked every single one of them. I didn't share that. It's the first time in my life I think I was like very freaking selfie to myself. And not share a cigar to anybody, not even you, not even you, man. And I saw you during that period after after that, and I yeah. I never yeah, thought about it. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. you're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Fast. You're welcome. Hammy, second question here is: Is smoke smoking cigars fresh from the rolling table? It's a good question that was asked on FOH. I love smoking cigars fresh from the rolling table. Yeah, and but we always age our cigars eight weeks when we do our nudies program, or we try to rate age them for eight weeks. And we both noticed that they they transition during that eight week period. Do you enjoy cigars when it's fresh when you roll them and you smoke them fresh from the rolling table? Describe to us the process. You love them then, and then how do you see it transitioning during that eight week period? Uh, yeah, first of all, yes, I do. I, I do love cigars out of my hand, straight to my to my mouth and smoke it. I love that. I used to. I used to for so many years. But I do also enjoy a lot cigars that they sell and they they came together again. And that's the blend. That's a hundred percent the blend. So let me let me give you an example for you guys to understand easier how this works. So let's say I'm blending a cigar. It's the same equation. When I'm blending a cigar and I, and I said, I nail it, I go what I'm looking for. I know that that strength, flavor, aroma, it is not. It's a little bit far away from what it's going to be. So, but I know that already. I know that when I'm tasting that, it's two steps above of what I'm looking for. I know when- In, when body, I, in body, in body, in, in body, in, in, a, in body. In body. Basically, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a little bit stronger in flavor and in strength that is it would be when it just rests and settles. Okay? Number one, because, and it's the same, exactly the same what is happening in a cigar rolling table. You get tobacco from different years, different farms. It's like putting together five, five people that they, it's the first time they see each other 
and they meet, and you gotta let them to meet each other. You gotta let them to become friends. And that take a little bit of time, even though they're all in the same path, they're all in the same religion, on the same political thinking, on the same baseball team, on the same football team, whatever the question is. But they don't know each other. They know they're gonna, they're gonna mash because they came out of the same equation, but there is a time for that. So when, I, when I'm blending, or when you're rolling in a, in a rolling table, number one, you are in a little bit more of water in the, on the leaf. So that water is the number one factor that increase the, the high level of nicotine. And, and that is becoming also a high level, a higher level of strength and body on the cigar. So the, the water, the water can't increase the nicotine. It may, it, it can't increase the, the nicotine's in the leaf. The water adds the no nicotine, nicotine. No, increase the nicotine flavor. flavor. In your okay. Okay. I don't okay. think that that it. The, let's say whatever the. I don't know the, the. How do you measure the nicotine? But whatever the measurement is, it's gonna be the same. But it's gonna feel different. That's that, that was what I'm trying to say. It's gonna because it does. It's going to increase in your palate, but it's the same amount, but it, it, it feels different. It feels higher because of the water, okay? So yeah. you blend the cigar, you, you put together all of them, and then you can smoke it right away. Basically what happened is that cigar just gives you the welcome with a little bit of spice, you know, like it's a little bit spicy. It is because of, the water, just bring up that to your palate. And then you try the same cigar a week later, I just went down a little, like a little bit. You try that cigar two weeks later, it's kind of like almost set it down. Four, eight weeks later, it's already melt. So everybody just took the place. Everybody just got the right humidity, right temperature, all the leaf, that's the blend, that's the blend. So in other words, I believe also a good way to understand this is there is one leaf that is gonna be higher than the other in the equation that you create as a blender that is gonna disappear. And there's no harmony, 100%. That's the best way to say it. There's a music going on, there's a symphony going on, but the harmony is not 100%, maybe it's 90%. So 40 weeks later, the harmony is there. The harmony is there. It's a symphony. Four to eight weeks later. That's the best way I seem to describe that. Okay. Hammy, in terms of when you're blending, what, I mean, in our world, we talk about honey cream. Um, we talked about Sancho Panza before in terms of saltiness. We're talking about, citrus we're talking about that we get that in different flavors when you're blending and you look at it from a very different perspective than the way we'd look at it what are the flavors or, or, or what sort of characteristics from the from the tobacco do you do you really dislike that you try to avoid okay so number one is the metallic uh, flavor i i can i can take that i i, I avoid that right away to the point that uh, if I fill in any of the tobacco that I'm using, it's gone. I, I ain't gonna touch it again. I ain't gonna touch it from that farm or, or that particular. I don't even gonna bother myself. Let's say if I found out in a, in a bezel, I don't care. I will not touch any other Lijero or, or Seiko or anything or binder that came from them or wrapper. So uh, I don't like either uh, tobacco that is not well fermented, which is got it, it has a lot of uh, ammoniac flavor and smell. And I don't metallic, like but me metallic ammonia. They're very well combined. Yeah, I always. But they're different. And the way I look at it, I'm going very specific of what that just do when it touch my palate. And I'm gonna be 
very honest with you. I rather prefer, if I don't have a choice, to deal with a tobacco that have kind of like a ammoniac uh, smell or a little bit of taste. I can handle that. I can maybe cover that with the other lips and blend it, trying to, uh, to it's like a fire and then you put like something just to cover it as much as you can. But it's very difficult to cover that metallic uh, flavor. It's, I mean, it's really, really hard. And it happened to me. Bunch of times. We, we so. were, remember, remember we were in Miami, yeah, I think it was November, and uh, we tried those fake Cohiba Robustos. Remember those, those, those Cohiba Robustos? Wait for some. How many puffs did I last on that one there? It was... It was one. It was, Jesus, that metallic taste. I actually, I did last a little bit longer because mine didn't got that flavor until a little bit further down, which it was also nothing. But yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. And that, that metallic, it could only come from ferment, fermentation again or poorly fermented tobacco, yeah? You'd think so. You'd think so. Ah, oh, man. Like, you know, unfortunately... Uh, you know, the, 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 the wrong things, you don't want to get stick to it. So I, I normally when you get, when I got that a few times that I got that tobacco, it's very hard to go to the provider and tell, you know what I mean? Like, hey, why this is with this metallic on test? I mean, you don't do that. So you just don't buy it again. And you, avoid and, and, you, and, you can, and you can get that taste, I assume, from from Viso, Ligero. It doesn't matter which the least it, it can be across. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. I believe, I believe yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a wrong treatment on the tobacco, mainly in the, on the pilons, you know, when you are fermented them. I believe so, you know, like that's when the game is gone, you know, and then there's nothing you can do. And it's thousands of pounds that they're gone. Or... As there's people out there that, that use it and some people like it because if they sell it and people buy it and I know they are there. But if you're a roller in, if you're a roller in Cuba in a factory, you're just rolling what you're given. So in the end, if that comes through the average person. Not yeah, but to be honest with you, man, to be them. honest, yeah. to be honest with you, brother, I never had that flavor, that metallic taste in Cuba. In all my years, never, never did, never had that bad experience. Is that because, I mean, we've had this discussion before, but just to enlighten the, um, the viewers, Cuban tobacco is generally sweet, isn't it? I mean, it, I'm very, I'm very, I'm very mild and light. I know that for a fact now. I know that for a fact. If you compare Cuban tobacco with any other tobacco, around the world. I said the only one that is, in my opinion, generally speaking, I don't want to go from one stream to the other, okay? I'm talking about general, in general. It would be the Dominican tobacco. The only one that may be lighter, in my opinion. But besides that, it's, it's lighter than Honduras, it's lighter than Nicaragua, it's lighter than, uh, Mexican, it is lighter. It is very pleasant. It's very uh, enjoyable, very aromatic, very sweet. But it's not powerful. If you compare Cuban tobacco with Honduras or Nicaragua, you know, it's not. It's, 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 uh, it's the lightest one. Taking, taking Cuban tobacco, again, I'm going to segue again here. Taking Cuban tobacco out of the equation, which which leaf or which variety in the non-Cuban world is the sweetest that you've tried? The Honduran tobacco. Yeah, yeah. since they since they won. Yeah, it was like love at the love at the first sight, you know. Yes, when I when I did the first uh, uh, galilla, you know, I took half a leaf and pull it and lit it. I knew it. Yeah, I did, and yes. And life is just bringing me better gifts, you know, like it's getting sweeter and sweeter, which is good. I do love also Nicaraguan tobacco, but it's, I mean, it's not, in my opinion, it's not as 
sweet at all as it is on the you know it's i mean it's a it's a night, kind of like day and night yeah i don't want to be yeah. that that rude but let's let's just say that they're a little bit far away in sweetness not in quality i'm not talking about quality but in sweetness, the good thing is that nicaragua tobacco has so many other qualities you know but if we talk about sweet tobacco yeah i'm gonna turn with my eyes closed to the honduran side yeah final question hammy for today and we'll do this on a regular weekly basis just um three or four questions so the videos aren't too long but i'm going to ask you as has been asked here how many cigars can a roller roll in cuba in a day and how does that translate to what you can roll in say honduras or nicaragua in a day and and the differences between the operations of the two okay so yeah there's a huge difference it's a so it's a not on that again so okay cuba and i believe both uh industries they have the pros and cons you know and, and i'm going to talk a little bit about it so in cuba let's say i'm rolling uh robustus so in Kiwa, every roller have to bunch. I have to put the wrapper on. You gotta do everything. So of course, the amount of cigars to be done, the quota to be done in eight hours, it would be less. So let's give an example. A person that is making a robusto in Havana, he gotta do 120 robustos in eight hours because he's dealing with everything. He's bunching and putting the rubber on. Versus a pair in Honduras or Nicaragua or Dominican, uh, there's two people, one is bunching, the other one is rolling. They can do in the same amount of time, average between 350 to 450 roasts in the same amount of time. So pros and cons, I'm gonna go in this one with the non-Cuban industry in terms of quality, consistency on the making of the cigar. Because let's give an example. For example, let's say you have a Galera, which is the department where the rollers work. In Havana, you have 300 rollers, and then you have 300 of them blending because they're doing, they're doing it all, okay? So versus a Galera in Honduras, 300 orders, but only half of them, only 150 are blending. The other 150 are dressing the cigars, but then touching the blend. So it's very easy to control and keep the consistency. Because out of this out of this 150 that I'm blending, maybe 20 of them are blending one brand. Another 25 are blending another brand or another size. And then you just shrink and shrink and shrink the quality checking of them in the non-Cuban side. Now let's go back to the Cuban industry. You have 300 rollers. All of them are blended. Instead of a 20, I'm making this brand that is 50, blending that. So it's, in my point of view, it's easier to control less people. It's just common sense than, than, than to control more people. To find out who is the one that is doing the wrong thing is gonna take you a little bit longer than if you have most of the time, you actually have maybe like one or two guys, two pairs, just doing a particular size. It's very easy to, to keep the tracking on what the quality and the flavor of that blend. So you, got, you, might have, you might have, uh, let's just say you got three pairs doing petite Coronas in Honduras or Nicaragua, yeah? 
uh, or let's say it's more of a more complicated cigar. Let's say it's a Lancero, and we've done Lanceros, and we understand the Lancero market. So you've got three pairs doing Lanceros. That means you've got three guys who are doing the bunching of the Lanceros. Only three, only three guys out of the six. Only three are blended. That's it. So you, you so you, as, as a supervisor, you're talking to them, you're showing them exactly how you want them to be bunched. You, want, you show them exactly what the blend is going to be. It goes through the process. Bang. It should be consistent every single one. Although no two cigars are exactly the same, but you should be with that. But, but yeah. it's, it's way easier to control three instead of 30. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm very happy with that. But I've always been. I've always been. I've always been like, I mean, and it, it will happen with us. It would happen that it would be a size that number one because not everybody can do it because it's gonna be difficult. But we came out with the flying pig. You know what I mean? Not everybody can do that. I don't want everybody to do it either. It would be maybe one or two guys the ones are gonna blend that. So when we do the flying pig later in the year, you will assume the process will be. You, you, you know who you think is going to be able to do it. You bring them in. You go through the process of this is how I want it to be done. You let them do it themselves. And then if someone just can't get it, then you bring someone else in and see until you get the right team. As easy get... as that. They have to do it as close as they can of what I'm doing. If they cannot achieve that, I mean, it is what it is. Not everybody can play the piano. Even though if you love the music. If you cannot play piano, you gotta play the trumpet. You are in the you are in the you're part of a team, but the piano is not for you. Piano is for another person. You're gonna just keep playing the trumpet. You're doing great. Leave the piano for whoever has the hands to play the piano. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. We all rollers, we all know how to make cigars, but not but we all different. We all differ. And that's part of a process. That's part of a, it no, doesn't matter if you are in Cuba. That's something that they, that we share, no matter in which country, which uh, country you are, is that there is, oh, the, the point is to, as a manager or the guy that the person is supervising them, just to find out who is who. There is always rollers that they go very well with skinny ring gauge cigars. And that's the, that's the, that's the comfortable song that they, they've been born to do that. But the second you move them from 38, normally these people average, they go very well up to 42. Don't move them up above 42. You're a 42 ring gauge guy, 42 down, 42, 40, 38, 36. Whatever. Then you have another bunch of people that are really, really good in the in between 44 and, and 50. They just nail it. And then you got these other people that they are the opposite of the skinny guys, but they always go bigger. So these are your big ring gauges guys. And then you have just a few. Just a few. And like in a 300 rollers galera, you have maybe four, maybe four, that doesn't matter. <laughs> you can ask them today in the morning to do Lanceros and they do. And then in the, after lunch, you say, no, stop. I need you to do Lucy Tent. All right, boom, boom, boom. But three or four, no more. Rare. But, but that's my job to find. And I had one, I have one already. I have one already. This guy, because I, but you know, you, you just, it's very easy to, to, find, to find out what this person is. You just say, hey, can you, can you do this? All right. So you see the, how, what the desire to do it is, if he's afraid or not. But you know, you know, so you're not afraid of anything. You say, okay, so what do you want me to do? This? Boom. So when you get that desire, uh, that's, a good, that's a good sign. And then pretty much most of the time, 
they nail it, you know? And I have that guy and I'm, I'm making ready another one, which is kind of like, it's more like in a skinny size, which is good too. You gotta have your, you know, leather uh, weapons, you know, in the skinny side, in the medium and in the big green gauges. So, and uh, yeah, so coming back to the question because I just divert myself to a different one. Uh, yes, uh, it's a bit different, you know, and uh, in my opinion, I would go, I mean, I would go with a non Cuban uh, in terms of, of quality and the making, I will. And they hate us, they hate Cubans when we say this. And I always, I find the time and the, the timing just to say, no matter where I am, if I'm in Honduras, Dominican, I said that everywhere I've been at some point because I have it. So we are 100% rural, so we, we are complete. You know, like we, we know we know we know how to do everything, which is very good. That's that's the pro that we have versus a con that they have. Like if we are you and me, we are a pair in any of these countries, and the only thing I know is to bunch, and the only thing you know is to roll. If you get sick, I lost. I don't know how to put the rocker on the cigar. I just know how to bunch, or vice versa. If I'm out. You don't know how to bunch, so that's the downside. Yeah, that's the only downside, which is very easy to fix. Well, they just put you together with another person. You know what I mean? So I mean, it's not it's not a big of a deal, but as a roller, now I'm talking as a roller. That's a very big handicap. Like, I mean, if you if you if you're the, if you're to amazing. Be fair, to be fair, to be fair, Hammy. Can you really call yourself a roller if you can't do the whole enchilada? I don't, don't ask me that because, you know, I mean, yes, you can. I'm going to be very nice because, yes, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, uh, no, no, you're not. <laughs> you, I mean, honestly, man, I, it, the truth is true. You know, you, you have a role. With all the respect, I always said that, with all the respect. They, what they do, I mean, the good thing about that is that they became masters in that half of the process. They're master, they nail it. They, they can just do it a slip with one hand looking that way. But it's overall, it's anymore. It's anymore. It, is, it, is, it is, I mean, it is, if I tell you something different, it's not gonna be me. So I gotta be me. You know, like with all the respect, and I always tell them that with a lot of respect. I mean, I said, I know now why do you hate us? Because, you know, and I, I made that very nasty black humor joke, which 99% of the time they don't like it at all, but uh, this is me. So, you know, I got to put the Cuban flag industry school <laughs> out there, you know what I mean? So keep, keep that's where I came from. So. Keep teaching them, keep spreading the love. That wraps up this week's episode of uh, Deep Dive with uh, Hamlet. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Love you, brother. Hi, guys. <laughs>